I think we're about ready to go. We got everybody yeah, I uh, think we're ready. welcomed in. Good, good, good. Good to see you, Daniela. Good to see you, Terry. So, Daniela is joining us um, here in Carney Point, New Jersey. It's amazing to be here, but you were a student where? I was. I was a student at Centenary University in Hackettstown, New Jersey, which is about an hour and a half away from here. Nice. So, I'm pretty local. Nice. So, you use LinkedIn a lot to connect with other inactive students around the world? Yeah, I've used LinkedIn plenty of times. I'm actually using LinkedIn a lot more now that I'm an Enactus employee. <laughs> I'm connecting with a lot of Enactus employees worldwide and Enactus students that I've had the pleasure to meet over the time I've been working here. Nice, Danielle. Let's get rocking with Sean Mealy. He's joining us here somewhere in the uh, world of Zoom. Sean, I gotta accept my uh, the fact that we are recording this. I hit my got it. Uh, good to see you, Sean Mealy from LinkedIn. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing great, Terry. Thank you again for letting me join today. So happy to be talking to you and everybody at Enactus. This is awesome. Thank you, Sean. You first joined us at uh, one of the Enactus World Cups in Silicon Valley. Thank you. An impressive yeah. panel. You had some colleagues from Google and many other. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Panama City, I think, was one of them. And uh, I'm blanking on the other one, maybe like Wells Fargo, I believe, as well. It's all good. It's all good. So thanks for being here today. You know, I really have always been a big fan of LinkedIn. And I had the chance to work with Jeff Weiner, your chair of the board. He was then CEO. And we worked on many wonderful frontiers, including Malaria No More. And I always appreciated his sense of service and his ideas around impact. And that made me loyal to LinkedIn for sure. There's so many great ways and reasons to be loyal to LinkedIn. You guys have weathered some storms. You really are continue to come on strong. There's lots of choices to connect in social media, but especially for the university students of Enactus and university students at large, if you want to advance your career, you want to stay connected for life. LinkedIn seems to be the place to do that, Sean. Yeah, it's really, uh the professional place for you to connect. Like we, we definitely have some competitors within this space, whether it be like the Facebook and Instagrams or well, I'm getting too old here, TikToks. Uh, but it, it's really a, a way for you to grow within your career. As you can imagine, a lot of your peers are not only going to be on LinkedIn, but some of the, your bosses and future bosses are going to be on LinkedIn. So it's a fantastic place for you to continue to see what you can do in your career and what others have done in their careers and try to like emulate them. So yeah, we're really proud of our, our network and the way that we've impacted our, our global world and brought everybody to create that economic opportunity to uh, get their next job in their career. Awesome. Well, here at the studios in Kearney Point, New Jersey, and uh, good to connect with you, but currently we're connecting with students around the world from over 36 countries uh, are joining us not only today, but uh, throughout 2022. So Welcome to the network. I know you're going to take us through uh, lots of great ways and ideas to help advance um, our LinkedIn. And, you know, one of the, the great things about LinkedIn that that forever surprises me is one of the things I look for is that little Enactus logo with the uh, there it is right behind me with the origami <laughs> like, all right, I'm definitely connecting to those alumni, those students and that network. LinkedIn does that for us. So as we take us uh, through, um, you're going to take us through uh, a bit of a presentation. I would ask all of you to have your questions ready. Feel free to ask in the chat, the live chat, if you so wish to do so. And also Daniela will be processing those questions for us. So let's get started. Let's rock those profiles. I'll turn it to you. I made your co-host there, uh, Sean Mealy. Let's get going. Yeah, absolutely. So as Terry said, please make this uh, as interactive as possible. You know, the goal is really just to make sure that you know how to utilize LinkedIn to not only make some of those connections, advance your career, and then connect with each other, not only as Enactus, Enactus today, but as colleagues in the future. So again, keep those questions coming. We're going to do a little bit of both. Uh, I'll stay within a presentation form, and then I'll jump into LinkedIn.com. Terry already alluded to the fact that you're looking to see that Enactus logo, that origami, uh, I'll show you exactly how you can uh, add that to your LinkedIn profile. So of course, it's going to help you uh, connect with everybody else. But again, my name is uh, Sean Mealy. I am a global customer success manager at LinkedIn. Essentially, what that means is I am sitting between our end users, meaning the recruiters who are trying to find their next placement, our sales teams, as well as products. So I wear many hats. Uh, my goal is to make sure that the recruiters know how to utilize LinkedIn to their fullest capabilities. Our sales partners and clients really are seeing that impact and ROI within their own businesses. 
And then last but not least, I provide some of the feedback to our product teams to make LinkedIn an even better place for all of you to connect with each other. So throughout this uh, presentation, we already uh, kicked off our introduction. So thank you so much, Terry. Uh, we'll talk about making connections. Uh, we'll talk about like really kind of building your profile, your story and your impact. Uh, we'll talk about leveraging LinkedIn on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's it'll be uh, you know, uh, connecting with each other or groups. And then of course, as I mentioned, any questions or ideas, anything that you have today, please let me know. So starting off with our global impact. So much like uh, Terry mentioned, you're coming across all over the world. Well, we are obviously a global company and continuing to grow. Uh, we actually have two new profiles joining LinkedIn every two seconds. And then you can see like there's 637 new data points uh, created there as well. We have almost 700 million members. We actually probably just uh, recently crossed that. 35 skill sets. So these are the, the types of information that you can put on your LinkedIn profile to let people know exactly your background and the types of positions that you're interested in. 30 million companies and growing and 20 million jobs. So you can go ahead and apply for those jobs and over 90,000 schools globally. So as you're uh, thinking about us as a unique platform, so one of the things I do want to talk about before we kick it into the LinkedIn profiles is how our, our entire network is a really holistic environment for you to find those new opportunities. So again, just thinking about LinkedIn, you're going to see here on a variety of different ways how jobs are going to be positioned in front of you. So starting with the left there, we're going to recommend jobs based on the information that is on your profile. So we already talked about like the skill sets that you can add, and I'll, I'll show you here in just a second. But as you're adding information to your profile, our algorithms are going to get smarter and smarter about the types of jobs that you may be interested in. So you will see some of these recommendations here on the left hand side, like right over that computer screen. Also, too, if you're aware, we do have that mobile application as well. And if you are searching for those jobs, you will see some of the ones that are recommended for you. So even if you're looking for an accountant, we may find some of those top accounting roles that we think you're a good fit for. And then last but not least, kind of thinking again about our ecosystem before we jump into your profile. If you're searching for individual companies, whether it be Enactus, if you want to uh, follow in Daniela's shoes, and really kind of be that alumni at Enactus, we can actually start to make some of those recommendations for jobs there as you're searching for Enactus or any other company for that matter. Any questions thus far? How are we doing, Danielle? I think we're doing good. We got a, we got a couple of questions in the, in the chat, Sean, but I think if you get, you carry on, you might answer some of those questions. And I see, I, I just want to, reach out and welcome to, uh, I see South Africa and Ghana and a couple other great, uh, I see Europe on and of course across the US, Canada. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Sean. Keep it going. Let's uh, hear about your profile, your story. And I can't wait also to touch on impact. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, in order to make that impact, you want to make sure that you're positioning yourself well across LinkedIn and then you know, starting with a profile photo. So, you know, as I alluded to before, talking about some of the other social media uh, websites out there, LinkedIn is a professional website. So you want to make sure that you're, you have a headshot, a professional photo. So keep any of those uh, possibly beach vacation photos or anything else uh, for those different sites. And you want to make sure, again, it is that professional photo here. Uh, profiles with a photo get nine times more connection requests, 20 times more of the profile views and 36 times uh, more messages. Next, we, we want to think of John, that was a that was a really key little nugget there. Nine times. So come back to me with that that last fact that was pretty powerful. Yeah. So if you think about our network, uh, we're still trying to bring everybody and create that network connectivity. So with a profile picture, it just makes you look more professional, more real, authentic. And people with that profile uh, picture have nine times more connection requests than those without a uh, profile picture. Yeah, it, picture. it, it, help, it can't. It, it also, I, I know you'll probably take us through how you can move that into a short video and even pronounce your own name, which is super cool. So this, 
little nugget opens a greater door to that deeper connectivity on a on a human human to human connection. Yeah, absolutely. And then, yeah, stepping forward, we can jump into like I'll, I'll show you a live example, my profile as well. But just adding more information to your profile is going to be super important. So who are you? How do you identify yourself? And I oftentimes get these questions, especially from you know, recent college students. Yeah, or, or they're possibly still in college at this point or university. You know, what industry really do I put in? Well, think about the, the career that you would like to have if you are looking to get into computer software, if you're looking to get into financial fields, that's the type of information you'd like to add here to your profile, kind of like pushing that out to our algorithm. So again, we're talking about those job slots as this kind of comes back together. All that, all this information that you're entering on your profile is going to help LinkedIn get smarter and smarter and help you uh, connect with some of those jobs or even those like-minded individuals. Next, while we're, you know, not a, a typical resume, uh, we do want to make sure that we are positioning ourselves again uh, to let people know exactly who we are. So LinkedIn.com is that free site. We have something called LinkedIn Recruiter, which is the, the product that I primarily support that enables recruiters to go out and headhunt, if you will, and find their next candidate for their, their perfect position. So this summary is a very important piece uh, to let that recruiter know who you are, what is your mission statement, and what type of impact that you're trying to make. You know, whether it be at Enactus now, or if you want to talk about your past or what you've done at, at Enactus, or what you'd like to do in the future, how would you like to impact the world? And this is really where you want to uh, put an emphasis on that note here within that particular summary section. Sean, I hear a lot from recruiters and others that, you know, obviously traditional resumes are going out the window and your profile becomes more important, not to mention it's dynamic. You can always update and add to your profile. Do you find that recruiters zip right to these LinkedIn profiles as a, as a key point of reference? How important is it to, in their recruiting process as a priority? Yeah, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the first impression, if you will. So as a recruiter is looking for that next perfect candidate, if they come across a profile that is missing information, they're gonna move on to the next one. As you can imagine, you know, we have, again, over 700 million people across our network. They're gonna try and find that profile that they know is a perfect fit. So they're not wasting their time with somebody who might not be. So that's why you wanna represent yourself here uh, across LinkedIn, especially within the summary section. But yeah, that's a very good point, Sarah. Yeah, thanks, Sean. And also the World Economic Forum recently said this is the great period of movement and res resignation. People are moving. They've gone through COVID. They're experiencing a different lifestyle and they want to change their career. So there's mass movements around the world, which is mass opportunity and mass connectivity. So what an amazing moment in history to be truly linked in and active. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh it has been a struggle for a lot of our, our recruiting firms. Um, they're turning down business because there's just so many candidates out there that are switching. Uh, it's been a, a unique time. I've been in the recruiting industry for about 10 years. I've never seen anything like this market. So especially for those of you who are looking to make that impact or step into uh, their first steps in your career, like now is really the perfect time because they are very, very interested in some of those candidates, and especially with your leadership and experience here at Enactus make sure you're putting that information on there. It's in a compelling story to any employer. Speaking of which, and detailing that experience here, oftentimes you get this question is, well, where do I put this in Actus information? Should it be like in a volunteer experience or should it be in an actual work experience? You know, we typically uh, allow you to have that type of autonomy to figure out where you wanna put this information. So how do you want to, again, describe yourself across your resume? If you were building your resume today, like in a Word document, would you want an actus to kind of show up as that word work history? If the answer is yes, then absolutely do the same thing on LinkedIn. Again, it's uh, really about being authentic self. And again, as Terry mentioned, it's dynamic. So this isn't set in stone. So you can have this as a work experience today and then shift it to that volunteer experience in the future. 
But if you do want to describe, again, type of projects that you worked on, how you project manage and program manage, whatever you're, you're trying to impact across the world, and show that here within uh, LinkedIn, you can uh, detail that within your uh, work experience. So next, adding examples of your work. So anytime that you add any type of uh, photo or you know, visual representation, it'll keep the average person on your profile seven times longer than if you don't. So we talked about having a profile picture, having this compelling media. So again, any pictures that you've had of any projects that you've worked on within Enactus, definitely wanna make sure that you have that information here too. Again, it's just allowing somebody to visually understand who you are as a, a person, as well as a candidate. Yep, and I already alluded to the volunteer experience. This is gonna show up at the bottom, however you want to interpret your time at Enactus, whether it's a volunteer or even work, you have that opportunity uh, to do so. And, you know, Terry has mentioned, you know, the great reshuffle as they're calling it here in the United States in terms of like candidates moving on after COVID. A lot of companies have noticed that if you don't want to make that type of social impact, you know, they, they may reach out to some of those other candidates because so many people are uh, changing the world or, you know, socially aware of what they would like to do in order to make the world a better place. So having this volunteer experience, again, is going to help you. And we can see here that you're gonna get six times the amount of profile views than somebody uh, who does not have volunteer experience. What's amazing here, Sean, is there's a convergence going on in the world, which would, we would have known as traditional volunteering. Now it becomes core to career as we look at the new careers of social innovation, social entrepreneurship, social justice. This is a convergence, it's moving. There's impact investment where what was traditional volunteer is now becoming integral into the lifestyle and the workspace. So this is a really uh, an amazing, it says something about the human being too, is to say, wow, there's somebody who's globally minded, they're a global citizen. That's a really key and important career connection. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, a lot of companies, uh, LinkedIn, obviously very biased. You know, we have our own, uh, own organizations within LinkedIn that help out with some of those social justice issues. Uh, so there's a variety of ways that you can get involved at the next company that you're working at. So having that conversation is really easy, especially for the recruiter to understand what you've done in the past and how that can incorporate with their business or some of the, the projects that they have going on internally, especially for a larger company. All of them are working on some of these social justice issues. So it's a way for you to kind of continue your impact. So last two things I wanna talk here about a profile is really adding those skill sets. We talked about it in the beginning on how we have thousands of skill sets that you can add to your profile. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're representing yourself here, not only the skill sets that you've had, possibly even some of the ones that you would like to work on or continue to grow with, but you can also receive some of these endorsements as well. So if you add these skill sets, some of your, uh, colleagues at Enactus can actually endorse you for them. And we can see uh, members who add uh, five or more receive 17 times more profile views. And the reason is, so we have our search algorithms within LinkedIn Recruiter. This is our enterprise paid product that'll enable you to find that perfect candidate. So again, having as many skill sets as, as you possibly can add, will just cast a wider net for you and allow you to be uh, coming up in more search results for those uh, recruiters. And then last but not least, uh, requesting recommendations. So I can jump into my LinkedIn profile and show you exactly how this would work. But essentially, if you've worked with somebody before, you can actually request a, a recommendation from that individual. And then you can give a, a recommendation to somebody as well on their own profiles. So um, before I shift gears, don't want us to forget about the location, education, publications, and accomplishments. And then, of course, uh, the impact that you're making. So I'll pause here for a moment. Uh, we can jump in and do like more of a, uh, a live demonstration across our profile and some of the other things that we can do. And we can jump back here into uh, the presentation. But uh, just wanted to see if any questions came through. 
Yeah, nice, Sean. Thank you, Singh. So I've got a um, couple of questions that are coming through a variety of different ways, eh? through the thread, through texting and, and everything else. And I also <laughs> Smoke just wanna, signals. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I just also want to, uh, which you get a lot here in New Jersey. Um, I, I do want to just, for everybody and for the audience's sake, while we're speaking a lot about an act is, this particular world class gets played in a lot of uh, college university classrooms. Um, throughout the world, over 1,800 campuses. Not everybody is familiar with Enactus, but this is your opportunity to connect with global citizens. And if you're into the space of social justice, social impact, um, especially as a social innovator, and you want that to fold in as part of your career, part of your lifestyle, and connect with others, Enactus is a great way to do it. And our guest here today, Sean Mealy at LinkedIn, what a perfect partnership. And what a great way to reach out to other global citizens. Every time I see that little origami s signal with the, uh, the SDG ring, I'm like, yep, connecting. And I get lots of amazing requests from students and alumni all over the world. But that, to me, is a symbol of trust, a symbol of integrity, symbol of values of uh, connectivity, collaboration, passion, and of course, innovation. So that to me is an instant icon I look for. And I know you started with a very simple fact is like, hey, make sure your picture is in the profile, but that doesn't always come obvious for people. And there's so many times where I don't see a picture. And quite frankly, I, I don't connect. If somebody didn't bother to put a profile picture in there, I just choose not to. And, and in the other worlds, that could also signal uh, a bot. Um, and LinkedIn is very good about um, identifying and, and squashing those bots and activity will prove that you're a real human being and when you post that content and people can respond and create that dialogue thread underneath a photo, underneath video, it really comes alive. And one of the things I really appreciate, um, Sean, is our capacity to link in with anybody anywhere in the world, but then also get to meet. And you have a opportunity through LinkedIn I want you to speak about, so that's the form of my question. I have near field opportunity to go, hey, these are the friends, associates, colleagues that are on LinkedIn in my, in my um, media vicinity. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that really cool feature? Yeah, that feature is actually on our uh, mobile device. So yep. if everybody wants to get out their phones, I can walk you through it. So if you actually select on my network and then manage my network, you can see the people that I follow. And then if you're actually in the, the same facility as somebody else, at the bottom is where you're gonna be able to connect with other individuals as well. Um, so unfortunately on my phone, it's not enabling me to, to show up here. No worries, um, Sean, but I, I, yeah. just, to, just to walk you through what I see, connections at the top, contacts, yep. people follow, groups, pages, events, newsletters, and hashtags. Where would you direct me to? So yeah, it, you have to uh, set up your Bluetooth network gotcha. in order to enable you to connect with somebody else, and that's where you'll be able to connect. So awesome. it works a heck of a lot better when we're all in uh, the same room together. But it, it's, a, of course, a great way if you're at any type of networking event for you to find out anybody else who's on LinkedIn. And then there's also uh, the availability for you to select that QR code as well. So what's the typical range for something like that? Let's say we're on a college campus and we're moving from building to building. What's the opportunity through, uh, is, it, is it via V, you know, Bluetooth and that, that's my geography or is that, is that the footprint? Yeah, so it's always going to be uh, through Bluetooth. So, uh, it, yeah, the range is just going to basically be on your own mobile device. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. It also can change very if you're on the same Wi-Fi connect or uh, Wi-Fi network as well. But uh, typically, like, yeah, if you're in a very large room, you'll be able to, to get most, if not everybody, uh, that you can connect with. Great. I do have a couple of questions coming into the um, thread here. Thank you. Um, Aniwahu, Aniyahu. Okay, I want to get that name right. It's a beautiful name. It's A N Y A W U. Uh, a frequent visitor. So thank you for for being with us today. Uh, asks, can you add your learning progress if 
in, oh, okay, so if you're learning a new skill and you're in progress of learning, maybe you haven't got to that level of, hey, I received a certificate, but look, here's my trajectory, here's what I'm working on. How might one do that, Sean? Yeah, I would still recommend adding that particular skill set. Again, it's uh, you trying to show your authentic self. Again, a recruiter is going to know somebody who's you know fresh out of graduating and you know just getting into their career. Perhaps, and I'm just adding Excel as a, an example. You're probably going to be a, a lot more junior than somebody who's been working in Excel their entire career. So those skill sets, there's no like rank yourself one out of ten. If you do have that skill set. Make sure that you're adding it. And again, that you can uh, build upon it as you continue to grow in your career. Nice. That's from um, Enya Wu. I want to get that name right because it's such a cool looking name, Enya Wu. And I hope I got that uh, correct. But what a great way to go into the thread and, and connect together at LinkedIn. And I encourage you to, uh, I believe he'll accept uh, an active student. So Sean Mealy, he can give you more tips if you can connect with him on LinkedIn. And certainly Daniela or me, myself, Terry, do connect with us on LinkedIn and so we can support our network, especially um, for global citizens around the world listening to this. Great. Sean, what do you got next? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into uh, LinkedIn. I'm going to show you through uh, a couple examples, again, how you can further your career. We can walk through a profile and some of the other things that you can do across LinkedIn. But uh, Terry, you bring up a, a good point, you know, just about uh, how we're connecting with each other. I will, of course, connect with anybody who sends me that request uh, since you've sent out several of those uh, different social media posts on LinkedIn. Yeah, my uh, connection requests have, have definitely gone up over uh, the past couple of days and even weeks. So thank you for sending those out. So let's start here um, with a couple of things. So we've talked about it in presentation form. Let's jump into my LinkedIn profile. Uh, Terry alluded to this, you know, in terms of like what we've done in the past. I'm very proud to kind of have my uh, picture here in the background. This is still yeah, from, that's super uh, cool, Sean. That and that can go to work for you. I mean, that shows that you're um, a panelist. You're you're you know a speaker. You're there with uh, good partners like Google, Kudu, LinkedIn, and others. So I I love when people utilize that space back there because the default is this kind of a I don't know just like sort of a <laughs> generic blue like screen back there yeah. but you can click in there and, and change it up so that's super cool yeah it's almost like a, a black hole if you will but uh yeah if you uh, are on your own profile picture you can see this pencil icon in the top right hand corner this is where you'll be able to change that photo so we can see here again like how zoomed in i am so on and so forth and then i can add uh new photos as well even if i go to change photo it allow me to upload it and it can talk about, you know, anything else. So self ID nice. for equity, I can be an ally, Black Lives Matter. You know, we will provide a lot of those uh, photos for you, but of course you can upload your own photo here and it'll provide some of those recommendations like how large it can be, so on and so forth. Nice. Same, same thing for our profile photo here. So if I select my profile photo, I can describe if I want to make it public. Um, I can add that photo, edit, or even add some of those frames. So for those of you who are looking to add skill sets or even anything else across your, your profile here, like if I was hiring for my team, I can add that particular banner. Uh, but most importantly, for a lot of us out there who are just getting started, you can let recruiters know that you're open to work. And it'll allow everybody across LinkedIn know that you're you're looking for that next opportunity. So you can add that to your profile photo if you choose. Just so I don't freak anybody out here uh, at LinkedIn, I'm gonna make sure I do not select that. But the next way to, to show that you're open to work is by selecting this open to uh, feature here right now. So you can be open to finding a new job. We'll get into providing services here in a second, but we can talk about what type of positions that I'm open to. So we'll auto-populate a lot of this information. So here's my current role. Uh, I am currently working on site and hybrid and I'm in Dallas, Texas, and I'm interested in full-time opportunities. So once you add this to your profile, 
you're going to let anybody with a LinkedIn recruiter seat, which again is our enterprise product to where all headhunters, um, whether it's staffing agencies or you know, companies like Google, they'll be able to see that you're open to work. But keep in mind, if you're currently employed, your current employer will not see this information. So even if they have a recruiter that has a LinkedIn recruiter seat, again, that enterprise product, they will not know that you're open to work. So we do protect our, our users and we are a user's first company. Quick question for you, Sean, and we've got some more questions coming in on the thread, but while you're there at that location, right? So a lot of global citizens. So we have people that are inactive, people I work with, or they're located anywhere in the world um, mm -hmm. and connectivity. How geocentric is that? Is there an option to say, hey, look, I'm open to working anywhere from the world. I'm, I'm open to work remotely. What is that? What does that look like in that pull down menu? Yeah, so you can get as uh, as granular as you would like. So for an example, um, Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex, this is a conglomerate of cities that are around uh, Dallas, Texas. But I can even go uh, a little bit further than that. I can add Dallas, or if I just would like to say within the United States, I can get a little bit bigger than that. But then again, if you are work open to remote, we would at least need to, to know again, what country that you're in. I would still recommend even entering in that uh, country or, or city, local city, just so uh, the recruiter can understand like what time zone that you're in. Uh, Cause you wanna make sure that you again can work those same hours as that company. So yeah, you do have that opportunity to do both. Nice. Yeah. I got so a if I click question. At while you're, sure. while you're rolling here, let's just take one of these. Uh, so thank you very much. This comes from Stanley. Thank you, Stanley, by the way. Uh, thanks for the tip, Sean. How often should um, someone post on LinkedIn to build a good network? So this talks about frequency and Sean, like, is there a too much where you're just like posting stuff or reposting stuff? And then, you know, that there's some, I got to believe there's some balance of authenticity in here. Yeah, authenticity is the key word. So don't post just to post, you know, this is again, like, uh, I'm going to pick, I'm picking on Instagram a lot, uh, even though they're a great partner of ours, but you know, you don't need to, to post the breakfast of avocado toast on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, make sure whenever you're posting something, it is authentic. You're, you're trying to uh, push some sort of narrative, whether it's about yourself, whether it's about a mission that you're striving for, or just an article that you, you think your network is going to um, be interested in. So there's not going to be that perfect amount of posting, but uh, I would recommend to anybody at minimum once a week. You know, that's a, a great way to continue to get your name out there, especially if you're looking for new opportunities uh, in your career. You want to make sure that your, your name is in front of people, but uh, you also don't want to become that person that gets unfollowed uh, on LinkedIn. So Sean, this, this is we're in this career space right now as you're helping us navigate through, and thank you very much. It also is an opportunity to position oneself as a, a thought leader for an actus an action leader, but also a good listener, uh, you know, to, to repost say from the uh, World Economic Forum or things of areas of your interest as, wow, that person is active in the, in the, in the uh, communication. But I also find a balance or somewhere between, hey, that person is clearly a thought leader. They're putting a lot of um, their personal uh, opinions and leading a lot of their thoughts, but I also see people that are really good listeners. And I, I really appreciate if I do a post and people comment, I'm in there, you know, I'm like, let's grow this conversation. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so many times, and maybe just to co pick on uh, Instagram with you for a moment, I think sometimes like is like just sort of a cheap way off is like, okay, that's cool. You like to appreciate it, but hey, at least maybe make it the effort of popping in and making a comment and growing that conversation. What do you think? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, there's multiple different ways going to Stanley back to your question about posting. Like, I, I think that's another way for you to post across LinkedIn. You're, you're nice. engaging with somebody else's conversation and continuing it, especially if you believe in exactly what you're saying. So I think it's a fantastic forum for you to do a mixture of both. So you're not always Stanley making it about your particular posts. You're helping others at the same time, which is what LinkedIn's all about. Nice. 
I do have a question, but I don't want to interrupt you, Sean. Um, it's coming from Olivia. Are you ready? I'd love to hear Olivia's question. Let's see what she uh, has. Hey, Olivia, if you can uh, unmute, go for it. Hey, good to see you. Well, wow, it's awesome to see your smiley face. I hope, I hope we can get some audio here. I think I'm Olivia. Yep, yeah, let's go. Let's try it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you. This has been an amazing um, session. And personally, I really, really love LinkedIn um, profile. It just it just works for me and for for my personality and the kind of things I do. So my question was actually on the open work um, future. So I once read an article on LinkedIn that talked about how the open work future shows that you're too available and how it may not be too effective for recruiter. So I wanted to know your thoughts on that. Um, is there a way to show that you're open to work without actually having the open to work future on your profile picture? Or what, what are your thoughts generally on that? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, great question. So it's, it's really kind of two options that you have here. And then I'll, I'll dive into a little bit more about, uh, you know, what you mean between like the two of like, what should you do? So first and foremost, you can add a frame to your profile picture that says you're open to work. So Olivia, part of her first question is, you know, you're, you're kind of looking desperate, if I can uh, say that across LinkedIn. Um, but essentially, I would say here, it just really kind of depends on, on where you are within your career. So there was some big news here within the United States, a company let go about 900 employees. And just like yourselves, I'm sure those employees are, are fantastic and any company would be lucky to have them. Perhaps this is an opportunity to show this banner for a short while that they are open to work so they can find that next opportunity quicker than they could without it. But Olivia, part two is, you know, you don't want to make sure that or you don't want to have that across your LinkedIn profile, but you still want to let recruiters know that you're open to work. You definitely can do that by selecting open to and finding a new job. If I add this to my profile, it's not gonna show up on my profile picture. So we do have those two options for you, Olivia, if that makes sense. Yes, it Thanks, does, Olivia. thank you so much. Is that helpful? It's good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Great, great, great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And good luck. Look at this, Terry, five people already. I think these are all all people yeah. that are joining us today that are going to be connected, and I'll be accepting those later. Nice, nice. And I can vouch for Olivia. You know, I, I really appreciate her activity. And also, um, I can't restate often enough how important it is to jump into other people's threads and comment. You know, I have this early world I started in the world of uh, gamification, really the OG of esports. I kind of forgot all about it. And people started like doing their research and they're like, well, this guy, Terry Tork, he was like the, one of the creators, originators of eSports. And it was fun for me. I joined a couple of those groups, which I want to ask you about, Sean, is like, how do I get into those conversation threads? And it was, it was funny, like people were finding me out of the past, but it was really pleasurable. And also I found that there is a lot of um, college students who were really interested to say, wow, can, can I turn my habit of playing gaming into a career? And so when I, you know, had spent time in esports and also in the film industry, to have those kind of um, questions come through to me, I'm really delighted. It's for me, it's a way to kind of an easy way to be a mentor and actually encourage um, young people. But let's, let's talk about connecting on on different groups and different passions, Sean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I already have a, an example up here, but I think we uh, also go and talk about uh, e-groups here in just a moment. All right. So uh, let's, let's start here from the beginning. Um, so when you're on your LinkedIn profile, you can uh, do a number of different things here. So we're, let's talk about esports here, just as a, a quick example. All right. So I'm going to type in esports here at the top of the screen. And then it's going to give me a number of different recommendations here, but I can then go ahead and select groups. So right off the bat, I see here esports and games. We have 580 members here within this particular group. So that's just one way that I can connect. Obviously, there's uh, other ways that I can think about how I would like to connect with different groups. We had a great question about skill sets. 
We even had another question about open to work. I can go ahead and select those groups here as well. Um, the next one that you can also do, uh, I'll just keep it with Enactus here for a little bit. I'll select Enactus within those groups. And then we see this one with almost 19,000 members. So there's gonna be a, uh, a variety of ways for us to be able to uh, work within these groups. So first of all, uh, I try to get that uh, request going here, Terry. It looks like somebody on yeah. the back end doesn't want to add me, but uh, quite all right. But within this particular group, it's going to work like your homepage across LinkedIn, but it's only going to be for those members within this particular group. So you can actually see those people, what they're engaging on. Terry, you mentioned about commenting. That's exactly what should be happening. This is where you really come together in groups and help each other make that greater impact. So whether it's, you know, finding that next opportunity within your career, if you're working on some sort of like change management and you have a question, if you have a question about a local government because you're trying to make an impact there, anything that you, you're thinking about, you can do that here within Enactus and connect with some of your fellow colleagues. But of course, this works for any group. This is just a, a quick example here. Nice, I'm, I'm smiling because you can't get into that group. Sean, I might be it's, able to work something out for you, man. <laughs> we you know a, a guy? Little, little tray. <laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy that maybe knows, you know, yeah. somebody who can let you in. But, uh, you know, any group that wants me as a member is probably not a place I want to be. But no, no, it's all good, man. We'll, we'll get you in. I have a, a probably a dangerous comment on the thread here. It comes from Matthias Charles, who says, uh, Terry does so well at writing LinkedIn recommendations for an act of students. He got me recommendations earlier this year. Um, it's true. Uh, I rarely, if ever, turn down a request to speak, uh, a recommendation. I always follow up with not a blind recommendation. I want to know a little bit about that human. I want to make sure we have an authentic exchange. And I want to know if they're values driven. I want to know if they're driven by integrity, passion, innovation, collaboration, some of those core values that I align with. So I'll have a little exchange and then I'll, I'll listen to them. But yeah, I'm always happy to write a recommendation by association of an actus, especially, but authentically, I look for recommendations that said, oh, they authentically know each other. They've made a connectivity. How do you read between the lines there, Sean? Because I'm sure in your position of career connections, there's some that look like, yeah, that looks a little generic. Yeah, generic or, you know, did you really work together closely? Yeah, that's uh, trying to police our, our entire network can be difficult. Um, but I would say just again, kind of thinking about how you want to portray your, yourself across this network is continuing to be authentic. Yes, there are going to be some people out there who are going to tr always try to game the system. And there's nothing that LinkedIn can do to prevent that. But the truth will always come out. So as you're going through the recruiting process, recruiters will look through those recommendations and they'll start to ask questions. And if you're just stumbling across how you know this person or how they know you, again, that truth is gonna come out. So making sure that you're, again, Tara, I'm gonna steal your word here, your authentic self, and that's gonna show up through, throughout your LinkedIn profile. So best represent yourself. That's, that's the only recommendation I can, uh, I can make. And then, yeah, try to always verify and validate when you're talking to anybody else. Thank you for underscoring that, Sean. You know, over the years, I, I like, you know, I've built a trusted network. And once you violate that trust, it's impossible or hard to rebuild. So always be your authentic self, always lead with integrity, and always work to build trust in your network because you never know, like crazy things come up from, from the past and just people you've worked with before or had an exchange with or made an impression with. Uh, it's really key. Matthias Charles got a question. I think I woke the giant there. Um, I did write him a recommendation. Always happy to do so. Matthias, can you unmute and say hey? Yes. Hi. Um, I'm so happy to be here. And um, so I have I have one question. I've always been um, wanting to ask LinkedIn, but I think Inactus has really made it possible for LinkedIn to be here. You know. So basically it's about um, the premium package, you know? So um, I don't really know if LinkedIn could possibly have a package for students um, because I mean, $29 minimum is quite expensive mm. for some of us, you know? So I don't know if there's a package that I don't really know of 
or better still, if there are plans on um, getting a premium package that can really help students also make use of that. So Ooh. that is uh, what in, has been on my mind. Yeah. Charles, really important question. You know, we, we talk about inclusion and I'm, um, you know, of the, of the 17 SDGs and 169 subpoints. I'm a, I'm a big champion of uh, Global Goal 10, which is reduced inequalities and democratizing access, education. Um, and uh, so big one, Sean, I'm sure you're doing some work in this, in this area, but how do you help support um, global su citizens around the world uh, connect on a, on a little bit more level playing field? Yeah, yeah, fantastic question there. So what I always oftentimes tell my friends is you don't have to have LinkedIn premium in order to find your next opportunity, your next job. There's plenty of things that we can do on the free side. I'm going to show you another thing here rather quickly that you can do. But uh, when, you're, when you're finding that next opportunity, Matthias, is that really what you're getting at? Like you're, you're trying to find your next steps in your career? Make sure you connect with me on LinkedIn.com. Maybe I can do something for you on the premium side too. Um, but uh, so when you're, when you're trying to find that next opportunity, there's uh, a reactive approach, which we've already discussed. So I'm going to find a new job. So I'm going to have recruiters know that I'm available and they're going to be able to reach out to me. But then I want to be proactive too across LinkedIn. And that's where uh, the LinkedIn jobs icon here at the top of the screen is going to be really powerful for you. So Matthias, tell me what, uh, what type of job are you looking for? Okay, so um, basically, I'm not really looking for a job, um, but then okay. I, I was really asking because um, I wanted to know how students can also leverage on um, the premium package. You know, you know, I've also made use of um, LinkedIn um, without sure. getting getting the, the premium package. Um, I've gotten um, the first time I created LinkedIn was high school, but then as at the time, I didn't really know what um, how to leverage on LinkedIn. So I became active when I came to college because I had people talking about it, you know, and I mean, I, I got my first international um, contract. It was a remote contract in Algeria through LinkedIn, you know, and that same, that very same year I became active. I got um, a recommendation to join Global Goodwill Ambassadors, you know, so, I mean, I've been able to get some kind of really good stuff out of LinkedIn, which was quite free. But then I was also um, thinking about the fact that me getting some of these free, um, I am um, some of these um, packages from the free package, you oh. know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to even get better um, opportunities by using the premium packages, you know, not just for job, uh -huh. but then um, me getting access to other uh, packages. So basically, that is um, basically okay. that is why uh -huh. I asked. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say it's a, it sounds like um, you don't really need that particular like packages or premiums. Um, you know, that LinkedIn recruiter product that I'm, I've been talking about for, for corporate companies almost cost $10,000. Like there wouldn't be no reason that I would recommend for that. LinkedIn premium, uh, that is really for those people that are trying to find their next opportunity within their career. It enables them to actually reach out to the recruiter directly as well as uh, do some other features. But, you know, it's just like, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I mean, I pick on them in a good way now. Like there's a, a number of different things that you can do to market yourself and pay for across their products, but you don't really need them. You know, it, it sounds like right now at this time, like I would continue to use those free features and that's really how you're maximizing it. So like, if I'm reading you right, like you're really just saying like, I feel like I've done everything on LinkedIn. What else can I possibly do? Do I need to start paying for it? The answer is no. I, I think you're you're doing everything that you possibly can uh, on uh, LinkedIn in order to to kind of again further yourself. So keep doing what you're doing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Charles. You know, when I see a LinkedIn Premium on somebody's profile, I don't think any differently. I just I uh, I think that's level set. You know, LinkedIn offers so much free connectivity, so many great tools. They're actually open to the world. So take advantage of everything Sean is talking about. And also we talk about careers, but the reality is Sean, you know, as we look at careers forward, they're not what we believed careers to be anymore. You know, they say, you know, graduates right now will change jobs five times in, in five years, but this is really a gig economy. There's opportunity for projects and 
opportunities to do you know a particular show or an event or an experience so i find linkedin for the gig economy super cool to say hey I'll, you know i'll be doing this for this period of time join me and that helps actually build career steps so it's really cool i want to go to uh, daniela uh, with a question here because well daniela is also in charge of being a social ambassador pushing social media for uh, an actus global as well as an actus uh, us but that's true of many of our our listeners uh, who are ambassadors for you know their organization for their job pushing out um, media so I, I want to jump to uh, Daniela and then we'll go to a final question and then we'll wrap up and uh, thank you so make sure you first of all LinkedIn with Sean Mealy please LinkedIn with myself Terry Torque I'm happy I'm, to connect I'm happy to make recommendations I'm happy to connect you to others it's what I love to do I wake up in the morning hoping to help advance social justice and social innovation and entrepreneurship. Daniela. Yeah, so being the marketing specialist for Enactus and being the social media director, we really, we really utilize Instagram Live and Facebook Live, but we really don't use LinkedIn Live. So I would love to learn more about the feature and how to get the LinkedIn Live feature. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, LinkedIn Live is still relatively new. So we're still kind of working out like uh, some of the bugs and other things that we, we have to, to make sure it can go live to every single person. So uh, at this time, uh, we're asking everybody to uh, submit a request to have LinkedIn Live associated with your company page. And then we will we'll send you the steps in order to, to get that LinkedIn Live uh, going. Uh, Terry mentioned too some other events that we have across LinkedIn. Those are still in the, the relatively early phases as well. And again, this is for only uh, company pages right now. We will be shifting obviously to the individual user who will be able to set up some of those events in the future. Awesome, Sean. I really appreciate that. You know, I want to underscore the opportunity of LinkedIn learning. It is spectacular. I really believe that the future of education is both adventure and access and what i mean by adventure is that the battle of the brain and the battle of the mind is up for grabs we would oftentimes much rather binge watch netflix or play our video games <clears throat> than you know quote unquote study so why don't we merge those amazing assets of entertainment and gamification and make learning an adventure why shouldn't it be why shouldn't it open our world why shouldn't it open that access to being a global citizen and i see that i see you guys really leading the way in linkedin learning you're engaging some of the great you know bollywood to hollywood um content creators some really cool access points so i can't speak enough about linkedin learning it is super cool it's adventurous it's in really nice little sound bites and i find myself really enthralled by linkedin learning so Thank you for that really, really great work that you guys are doing at LinkedIn. Yeah, I'm trying to yeah create that holistic environment for us too. I still think there's opportunities for you to, to again, learn from others, as Terry was mentioned, continue to comment on, on different things, engage with each other in groups. I think that's part of the adventure of learning uh, too, as well across LinkedIn, but then having that learning content coming to you, I think is uh, super powerful too. So thanks, Terry. Yeah. Thanks. And on your LinkedIn Live, I can appreciate, you know, that's a lot of bandwidth, right? That's a new frontier. There's a lot of people in that space. And what I do appreciate is that LinkedIn typically, as always, does it in a very calculated, methodical way, um, because also a curated way. There can be just a tremendous amount of junk out there um, in the social sphere. And I really, what I love about LinkedIn is that curation. It helps me focus on business-minded career connectivity that are bit more meaningful and a lot more impactful, positive impact. So thank you for that great work. Sean, some final tips for global citizens connecting around the world. Yeah, if I had to uh, say one last thing, uh, I think Stanley asked some questions regarding like, you know, posting. So just a couple quick tips here. Anytime that you can at somebody, it's gonna help your, uh, your posts go viral. The other thing, and this can also wrap up into some of the ways that you can learn is adding hashtags. So again, make sure that you're tagging somebody using the at symbol and adding hashtags. 
And if you're ever interested in what type of hashtags that you should add within some of your, your posts, you can go on your LinkedIn profile. You can see the ones that I'm currently following. And if you select discover more, I'll actually show some of these hashtags here as well. And then you can start to see like, you know, some other ones. So for a quick nice. example, management and consulting, anytime somebody adds that hashtag to their individual posts, management and consulting, it's going to go out to those 4.2 million um, followers. So again, to help your, uh, I know Terry, you mentioned, you know, it's just about likes on Facebook and Instagram. We still like the likes though. We can't get rid of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do add those tags and hashtags, it will help your, uh, Posts go a little bit more viral to get some of those likes, but of course, some more comments as well. Awesome, Sean. Well, we like the likes and we love adding a little love too, which you just did. <laughs> I, I really helped, you know, it helps people advance their careers, their profile, truly to rock your profile. Thank you for continuing to be a friend of Global Citizens and Enactus everywhere. Um, thank you for so much of what you do. I'm here because of the good graces of uh, Scott Fisher and Dana. Thomas are here at the uh, studios at Kearney Point. I hope you can join us next time here live. It's a really oh, amazing space and place and also this vibe of connecting social innovators, social entrepreneurs. I love a couple of the things that you laid out there, especially the idea of, you know, getting your elevator pitch together. You know, what's your what's your 22 second spiel? What's your 77 second film? What is that quick story about you? It doesn't have to be what you do as a job, but you as a human, the authentic self, that those choices that you make and LinkedIn is dynamic. So you're always able to update that, which is super, super cool. Sean Mealy from LinkedIn, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for joining the world class. Uh, Daniela is coordinating all of this spectacular, fantastic, really great. This content will continue to connect with world classes around the world, especially over 1800 campuses of Enactus and many, many more. So this is your opportunity at LinkedIn with us, LinkedIn with Sean Mealy, LinkedIn with myself, Terry Torque. happy to make uh, connectivity. Thank you all for joining the world class. And it is great to be here live from the studios at Carney Point. Sean, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. And thanks everyone for joining in all your great questions. Have a great day.